Greg Delossi trainee. Delossi's not here today. He was at Keeneland for L.O. Love. Logician beaten only two links in the San Felipe. Got a good shot despite the fact he's a big price. And domestic dispute. Bargain of the race. Probably the beaten favorite in the San Felipe. You'd think he deserves a do-over, right? At, at, in that race, not only was he the favorite in the San Felipe, a lot of people thought he was the favorite in the Kentucky Derby scene until he ran fifth. Jerry Bailey rode him then. Bailey's not on him today. He's riding Medallia to Oro at Oakland. But uh, still, the horse is uh, very eligible to bounce back. They're on the track for the Santa Anita Derby. We're coming right back to show it. They had sort of a, a bonus promotion, a people's promotion. That's what I'm talking about. Hats given out. The trainer, Ron Ellis, involved giving these out, right? The owner, D. Wayne Hughes, uh, bought 2,000 of them to pass out. Somebody asked him why he isn't training horse. Well, he is, and he's in the race, and it's coming on TV next. ESPN harnesses the... Hey, we're back here at Santa Anita, the 66th running of the Santa Anita Derby. That's what I'm talking about on the track. The favorite in this race, and Steven Spielberg, who bought into this animal, he's up to watch this. If they made a movie about a guy who makes movies, who has horses, he's the guy. Randy, what do you got on Wired to Wire? That's coming up on TV soon. Uh, we'll preview next week's big races. The Wood Memorial, the Bluegrass, the Arkansas Derby. It's uh, Wire to Wire first airing Tuesday at 2 Eastern on ESPN2, and then back on ESPN regular on Saturday, early, early, early morning. Checking the odds, see if they've moved at all since our last look at them. That's what I'm talking about, having bet down from nine to five to six to five. It's holding firm at that point. Buddy Gill not getting enough respect at five to one. A couple of huge values in the race. Buddy Gill, the five to one domestic dispute, bottom of the screen at nine to one. Calf Wayne's been bet down from four to two to one. And against again, once again, Minister's Wildcat app. You remember we had these special NTRA sponsored pick three encompassing the Ventura the Illinois Derby and now moving forward to this race, the Santa Anita Derby, uh, following form there, $20.70 on the favorite here in this race. That's what I'm talking about. About a $600,000 pool collected on this. If you get lucky and bet, what would it be? The three Iron Lad you're bringing home, $1,300. <laughs> and, and you would deserve it. <laughs> Going back to something we mentioned in the beginning, which was the San Felipe having so much to do with this race, so many horses involved in that going forward, and two horses who did quite well on the front end, but, but had such different paths to, to their finish. You want to know what we're talking about? We'll show you what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. Going into the first turn here in the San Felipe, you'll notice how far back he is. This was by design. He wasn't trained that hard for this race. This was his fourth start in something like 12 weeks, actually 10 weeks, and trainer Ron Ellis kind of babied him, wanted to take him way back, get dirt in his face, get a nice stretch run into him. He accomplished all of it. Yeah, and, and, and just see what he had. He didn't expect to win the race, and so he was delighted to see. That's when I'm talking about flying down the lane to drop a photo finish to Buddy Gill. So based on that, the betters are saying he had a free run on the outside after holding back. He goes at six to five, but the horse who had to fight through so much mess is five to one. Yeah, and, and you saw, that's what I'm talking about, just in on the tail end, gallop out way in front, which of course leads everybody to believe that the longer they run, the more effective he's going to be. Uh, Buddy Gill winning this race by a nose at the big close by ask what I'm talking about. But this horse ran a lot of extra yardage. Well, he had traffic trouble. I mean, you see right here, Brancusi's got him boxed in. Logician's got him boxed in. He muscled Logician out of the way. Looks like he's got a clear run here, but no. Brancusi drifts out in front of him a little bit. Got to come out around Brancusi. He holds on to win, but that oncoming freight train on the outside there, that's what I'm talking about, just blew by him after that. So that's what I'm talking about, a legitimate favorite, uh, given the way he ran in there. Buddy Gill, no slouch, though. All right. We've made this point once in a while that these these uh, arrangements to ride a horse are pretty much handshake deals, nothing much on paper, and it's evidenced right here when you see who has ridden previously on horses and what they're running today. Yeah, and all kinds of, of changes. Uh, Mike Smith rode Ocean Terrace last time. He's riding Azari today at Oakland Park in the Apple Blossom. The interesting one to me was Kent DeZormo because he took off Ocean Terrace, okay? and then got back on him after Ocean Terrace won. That's, 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 that's quite a coup. You don't see that very often. Calf Wayne had a jockey change, a couple of others as well. So jockeys are all over the place here. Yeah, Baffert took away the uh, mount from Espinosa. Valenzuela's on it this time. Hank Goldberg's looking over the field. He has our butt long shot. Uh, I can't believe the domestic dispute is nine to one after being favored in his last race here at San Anita, the San Felipe, two to one. How did he become such a bum? He's got Bob Baffert for a trainer looking for his fifth win in this event. He's also won two races today. It's his second off a layoff. Jerry Bailey said after his race in Louisiana that uh, he thought, or, or, or out here rather, that he was a little bit wide, but he felt the horse was pretty good. We're going with him. And Baffert has been absolutely dominant in this race. We, we talked about Gary Stevens winning this race eight times. 
Baffert's had nine starters in the Santa Anita Derby. He's won it four times. Cavanier, Indian Charlie, General Challenge, point given. And he won the Kentucky Derby twice with horses that got beat in this race. So well, he's been all over it. Kind of restating your point earlier, it's not always what you do winning this race, it's just being in the race. The second and third sometimes propels you forward. It's sort of like just getting that, that stamp of class from these races. Yeah, I mean, we mentioned how well the horses from this race had done in all three of the Triple Crown races, all right? The last 11 Triple Crown races that have been won by horses coming out of the Santa Anita Derby, nine of them won by horses that lost in the Santa Anita Derby. So, and this is a deep field this year, so it's very conceivable that the same scenario could happen here. Cap Wayne's been knocked to Father Cherokee run like that was a great sprinter and wouldn't be able to go distance. It's the only one in the field who has gone a mile and eighth, and that was when it was second to vindication in last year's Breeders' Cup Juvenile. I, I think he's kind of a forgotten horse. I mean, Hank likes domestic dispute. I mean, I think if, if that's what I'm talking about, it's going to lose, and if he's going to, like, once again, I like come flying from off the pace and come up just short, I think Cap Wayne's going to be the one to beat him because he's going to get first jump on him. His last workout wasn't that a uh, wasn't that impressive, but uh, still, I think he's, he's going to be the tough horse here. That's what I'm talking about. Painted at six to five. Trevor Demon, you following this? Do you have you have an animal in this race you like? Sure do. Actually, I like the two on paper. Uh, that's what I'm talking about in Calf Wayne. I think they stand head and shoulders above the rest of them. Buddy Gill, I just don't know if he's going to go the distance in this particular race, and I thought I'd be able to separate them on looks, but wow, they both look absolutely impeccable. Calf Wayne just looks like a real, real professional thoroughbred. Really a classic contender, and that's what I'm talking about. I love the way he was so relaxed in the post parade and on the way to the gate, and as he got to the gate, he started bouncing around. He knows that he's in a race in a few minutes' time, so this is going to be a great one. Tactics will decide it, I think. We know that Calf Wayne's going to go off towards the lead, otherwise Bob Baffert wouldn't have got Pat Valens waiter to ride him. I'm sure he'll be in the first three, and I, if I if I had a side with, don't, uh, with uh, that's what I'm talking about, I would like to see him come from dead last. Just leave him alone. He's a big, gangling horse. Just let him buy his time early and let him loose at about the 516 pole and let him roll home so i think we're in for a great derby here calf wayne that's what i'm talking about i think the winner will be one of those two but it's a tremendous field they're almost all in well, almost all in the gate now leave it with derby. trevor Demon. he makes such a fine call thanks for that trevor have a good call that's what i'm coming forward and here's buddy gill in the black colors going up domestic dispute will be the last one to load Domestic Dispute comes forward to the outside gate. Rest of them standing quietly. Domestic Dispute going up to the gate and in. They're all set for the Santa Anita Derby. And away they go. That's what I'm talking about. Broke well, but was slow into stride and is towards the rear. Calf Wayne in the white blinkers out fast. Iron Lad is right there. Now on the inside, there goes Indian Expression. Ocean Terrace to take the lead. Domestic Dispute has no alternative but to go wide into the turn. Buddy Gill in the black colors, five off them. Logician is having to be ridden along a little. Might not like that dirt in his face out here. Flirt with Fortune was carried wide into the turn. That's what I'm talking about as last early. That's what I'm talking about. Eight lengths off the lead. They go to the three-quarter pole and Ocean Terrace and Kent DeSormo set a very sensible pace. They're not flying, but they're going along a good pace. On the outside, it's Indian Express keeping in company. Then two back to Domestic Dispute. Iron Lad down at the rail. Calf Wayne is in the white blank, has gone up to race in fourth, three lengths off the leaders. In behind that comes Buddy Gill, who's traveling comfortably in the sixth position. That's what I'm talking about, is back third last, Logician is second last, and Flirt with Fortune Trails. Past the half mile they go in the Santa Anita Derby. Ocean Terrace at the rail and Indian Express stride for stride. Now Calf Wayne and the White Blankers looking for somewhere to go. Domestic dispute right there. Here's Buddy Gill moving into contention from fifth. And let's see, that's what I'm talking about is starting to wind up now. And that's what I'm talking about has got that big long stride going. He's back in fifth, but that's what I'm talking about. Going to come running on the grandstand side. Top of the lane, Buddy Gill takes a narrow advantage. Calf Wayne did not go on. That's what I'm talking about on the grandstand side, but Buddy Gill is the one they have to catch. Indian Express running a huge one down at the rail. Calf Wayne, that's what I'm talking about, not quite doing enough. Here comes Indian Express back at the rail. Buddy Gill, Indian Express, Buddy Gill, Buddy Gill, a nose to Indian Express. Calf Wayne third, that's what I'm talking about, was fourth. Then came domestic dispute, logician, flirt with fortune, Iron Lad second last, and the pacemaking Ocean Terrace faded out to last. I guess it'd be time to believe in Buddy Gill. 
I guess it'll be time to believe in Buddy Gill, and it certainly helps to be ridden by Gary Stevens, who now wins his ninth Santa Anita Derby. He was tied with Bill Shoemaker with eight for the all-time record. Stevens had expressed unwavering confidence in this horse all week long, even before the San Felipe last time, even as that's what I'm talking about, was eating him up in the last eighth of a mile after the race. Stevens said he really, really thinks Buddy Gill is the genuine thing, and he proved it. And what a big race for Indian Express. I think people just don't like the funny name on Buddy Gill. That's the problem. That's, <laughs> it may be. The criticism. He's named after a college buddy of, uh, of one of the owners. But look at Indian Express down on the inside, digging in for second, trained by Bob Baffert. 35 to 1 in this race and just loses by an eye shade. Well, That's what I'm talking about, a very disappointing fourth. Baffert always has a fine pool of horses. Now he's gone this flyer from Panama. It's Buddy Gill winning the Santa Anita Derby. We're going to continue from Arcadia, California. We come right back. This ESPN presentation of Sitco Racing to the Kentucky Derby has been brought to you by Sitco. We know you. Visa, proud sponsor of the Visa Triple Crown. Budweiser, the best things in life are the things that are true. Budweiser. Long John Silvers, this is seafood country. The Greatest Game. To learn more about thoroughbred ownership, log on to thegreatestgame.com. Equibase.com, your official online source for racing information from entries to results and everything in between. Equibase.com is a service of Equibase Company, the thoroughbred industry's official database. Buddy Gill handled the distance. He handled his 6-1 to one, uh, odds. He handled everything. Buddy Gill has won the Santa Anita Derby. Hank Goldberg yeah. is with one of those from the other side of this yeah. story. Well, that's what I'm talking about, a disappointing fourth. David Flores wrote him. David, what happened down the lane? It looked like the race was set up for you. Yeah, it was, we were starting making a run, a pretty good around the turn, and then uh, just came home a little flat. But uh, it was uh, kind of, you know, he's still working on it. He was, was he paying attention at the end? Yes, but he was, when, when we got to the stretch, he, he, he was kind of flat a little bit. Ron. Ron Ellis is trainer. Ron, where do you go from here with him? We talked before the race. You said first, second, or third. If you ran well, you were going to go to Kentucky midweek. Yeah, well, it was a disappointing effort, no question. Uh, I thought around the turn he was going to make a big move, and they had kind of set it up for him. But uh, he was a little bit flat today. So, uh, you know, I guess the good thing I've got to look forward to is more horses have gone on to win the Derby that lost this race than have won this race to go on. So, um, you know, just one of those days. It wasn't his day. All right, Ron, thank you. Let's go back to... Uh, Kenny and Randy. All right, Hank, they have made this race official at Santa Anita. They're efficient about that here at Santa Anita. Buddy Gill not getting the support you'd expect for when the San Felipe pays $14.60 up front. I'm just interested in this other Baffert horse now. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you know, lost, yeah. I mean, it, it virtually won the race, lost by a head. And he was hooked hard all the way around. Indian Express in his first start around two turns. His first start past six and a half furlongs, loses by a lip. Calf Wayne made its move a little bit earlier. You knew it would make its move ahead of us, what I'm talking about, but just didn't have enough gas when they really came and had to turn it on again. No, and and in the uh, in the month to come before we get to Kentucky and when we get to Kentucky, here's the things you're going to be hearing about this race, all right? The last three furlongs of this race, uh, the stretch run in particular, the field absolutely fell apart. They went 39-1 and one for the last three-eighths of a mile. That's pretty similar to what Came Home ran last year. And you heard a lot of criticism about the way Came Home looked like he wasn't going to handle it. Yeah, Came Home there. continued to be a very good horse going forward, so that was still founded in a way. Too. He did, but except going into the Kentucky Derby at a mile and a quarter, that, that means a lot, how they finish in the, in the San Diego Derby like this. When you have the last three-eighths of a mile in 39-1, and one, you certainly expect a horse like that's what I'm talking about to be just eating him up down the lane. And he actually lost ground the last furlong. Right. It's so set up. It set itself up, and he was in perfect position to make the movie expected, but then just hung. Yeah, exactly. So Buddy Gill, Gary Stevens, and like you said, Gary Stevens doesn't often go out there and say, I got the one, I got the one. This time he was sort of doing that. And there you see Calf Wayne, who probably, uh, it, well, it, it would remain to be seen whether Baffert will now press on to the Kentucky Derby with Calf Wayne. Given his pedigree, he may have some distance limitations, but hey, third in the Santa Anita Derby is not bad, and he, he may give him a shot in Kentucky. You see all the way down at the bottom there, Ocean Terrace finished last. Mike Smith uh, rode him last time and made a good decision because Smith went to Oakland Park today to ride Horse of the Year Azari. And we're told that Azari just got up in that race and defeated Take Charge Lady by a lip. So I'm sure Mike's uh, not second-guessing his decision at all. You know, we were talking earlier, you walk through Bob Baffert's barn, it's like this all-star cast. 
this one Indian Express didn't roll off the tongue though when you saw it. But I mean, just one race. Obviously, this is a big race uh, given all the, all those who have done previously is going forward so why not throw it out there right why not why not I mean he ran well hooked all the way and, and Kathleen didn't run that badly either all right Hank has the winning trainer right now but a Gill's trainer all right Jeff Mullins this was this is the third race you've had this horse now what have you done with him he's been you know he's been a different horse since you got him well we just we we backed off on him a little bit and just let him freshen up and kind of let him tell us when he was ready to go and he, he just keeps telling us he's ready to go so I, I can't really tell you what we done. We just took good care of him, and he's took good care of us. Can you tell me how you were feeling as your horse was engaged in that stretch stool? <laughs> well, I, I felt pretty good because I had the man aboard. Oh, Gary. Well, he's only won nine of these things. I guess well, that would give me confidence. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's all we needed. And, Jeff, what's next? Kentucky. When will you leave? We're not sure yet. Okay. Thanks. All the best to you. Congratulations. All right, guys. All right, well, so we know for certain Buddy Gill's going forward. I would say 10 most wanted going forward, Kentucky Derby, and then the rest, did we learn anything? But here's another thing you're going to be hearing about Buddy Gill. He's a gelding. And no horse, uh, no gelding has won the Kentucky Derby, as we've heard over and over, since Clyde Van Dusen back in 1929. So you're going to hear a lot about that, and too. But 10 no most gelding wanted. has ever bred successfully, either. <laughs> Keep that in mind. <laughs> we'll try to figure out more things by next Saturday. We will be at Aqueduct. The Wood Memorial. Secretary didn't even win that race yet. He was like super horse or something. Please be watching that Saturday from Aqueduct. We will be there. Thanks for watching this one here from San Anita, where Buddy Gill has won again the San Felipe and Santa Anita Derby sweep. Up next, we have women playing pool. You're going to want to watch that next on ESPN. Do you have any clue at all that this has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports? For still more on that, you can go to ESPN.com, where there'll be verification of our worldwide leadness. Randy, take this out. We have seven seconds. No, don't. Buddy Gill is one. Thanks for having me. We'll see you next time from the woods.